welcome to the year-end program for the University of Louisville School of Medicine Department of Psychiatry, and welcome also to the Hurstburn Country Club. Dr. Casey is unable to attend, and we have a few other folks who are either presenting normally or will be receiving awards who were also unable to attend. Most people are here who need to be here, so again, welcome that. And then there are a few words from Dr. Casey. I'm going to let him speak for himself here if technology cooperates, so let's see. Welcome, everyone. I'm Dr. David Casey, Chair of the Department of Psychiatry and Behavioral Sciences, and I'd like to welcome you uh, to our celebration of the class of 2022, uh, a special welcome to uh, all of our guests, and, uh, and uh, a thankful welcome to our faculty, staff, uh, and all of our other uh, attendees tonight. Uh, you all have uh, survived uh, COVID. You're one of the few graduating classes that will probably ever spend um, you're almost uh, more than half of your training uh, during a pandemic, uh, and yet you persevered. Uh, you have successfully weathered four years of training in psychiatry. You're very, very well prepared for your careers. Uh, and this is your evening to bask in your accomplishments. Uh, we're not supposed to play favorites, but I have enjoyed working with your class of very talented individuals, um, uh, especially. Best of luck to you all going forward. Uh, enjoy your night tonight, and once again, congratulations to you all. I'm going to bring Dr. Kathy Vincent up, who also has a few words from the Vice Chair of Education, and then it'll be Dr. Eve's turn. Thank you. Well, this is a celebration, and I'm very excited to be here in person, not virtually, to really talk with each of you. Uh, so welcome to this beautiful venue for graduation. This is what you deserve. We are mm -hmm. here to celebrate the completion of four years of residency training for our PGY4 residents. We're also here to recognize several of our residents who will be leaving our program and starting a new journey as child fellows. And finally, we're gonna honor some people who have really showed excellence in their work, whether that's working work, or residency work or faculty work. Uh, it truly is an honor to be here with all of you tonight. It's been too long. We have not met in person for a graduation since 2019. So this is, well, last year we did meet, I take that back, but not in our usual venue, which is like this. So. Uh, again, thank you all for coming. We're going to have a great night tonight. And without further ado, I will introduce Dr. Courtney Eves. We'll talk about family and friends. First thing I want to do is recognize all of the faculty members that came out tonight to help us celebrate all of our graduates. We have an amazing group of faculty. They're all listed on the back here. Many that are not here and then many that are here. Thank you all so much for coming. We greatly appreciate everything you do for our residents. We could not have the excellent program we do without you all. We have great faculty. They take a lot of time with teaching, with mentoring, um, supervision, anything and everything for our residents. And we really appreciate you all coming out tonight. Um, the next thing that we're going to do is I'm going to have some of our graduates that have brought their families with them introduce them to us. Um, and so I'm going to put you all on the spot a little bit if you brought your family. Um, when I call on you, if you want to kind of stand up and let us know who all you brought with you. We know families are a huge part of these residents' lives and very supportive and really um, help them out through these, through these um, years that they're here. Uh, so let's see. Uh, Abe, do you want to start? Yes. My son, Solomon. Say hi. <laughs> <laughs> and my mom, Thank you, thank you. Ali, do you want to go? Yeah, thanks. So, okay. Ali, I have all right, and Jeff, I believe. Uh, hey, everyone. Uh, my name is Jeff. I'm here with my mom. I'm here with my dad. I'm here with the original doctor. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, Steven? <laughs> and Ethan, I think. Some family? Mm -hmm. Just quickly, I have my wife, Barbara, daughter, Marissa, son, Matthew, just recognition, guys, that um, having your family around you makes this all go much better. All right. And very last, if we, if, if y'all wouldn't mind, any faculty members that are here, if you want to maybe stand up so we can give you all a round of applause and thank you for being a part of our residency. <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna hand it back over to Dr. Caudill, thank you. So we have nine residents that come into the program each year. We have around 30, mid 30, 35, 34 residents on average, because of course a few PGY4 residents uh, each year will go on to child and adolescent training. Each year though, we pick two residents to serve as chiefs. And um, we've been very well blessed with this program for a number of years, have excellent chiefs, but these guys really set the bar uh, above where uh, maybe it's been in a while. Uh, they're a tough act to follow, but I think we were in good shape for that as well. But I, I do wanna recognize our two chiefs from the past year, and that is Dr. Ali Faruqi and Dr. Matthew Neal. <laughs> So thank you guys. And that's on behalf of the entire training office. And next in representing the Residents Association, I wanna introduce Dr. Davis Fleming and he's got a couple of awards to present as well. All right, good evening everyone. Um, as Dr. Pablo said, my name is Davis Fleming. I'm a rising third year um, resident here. Um, and I'm the president of the Resident Association Committee here. Um, the first person I'd like to recognize um, and honor is Dr. Catherine Marcellus. Um, Dr. Marcellus was the president of the Resident Association Committee during last academic year. It's no surprise when I say this, but Dr. Marcellus has gone above and beyond what has been asked for her as the Resident Association Committee president. She's someone who has advocated for us time and time again and brought up issues on our behalf to the training office um, whenever they arose and as soon as they arose. Um, she's truly put her co-residents needs first and foremost. And she's mentored me to do the same as president. Um, I can speak for all of us uh, in saying that we are honored and grateful to have her now serve as our chief president. Um, so please help me give me a warm thanks to Dr. Catherine Mar Marcellus and her service. So the um, Residents Association Committee has several awards to give out um, every year to recipients. Um, these uh, awards are voted on by the residents at the end of each academic year. Um, the first award I'd like to present is the uh, Golden Appreciation Staff Award. Um, each year the residents get together to nominate and vote on who should be recognized as exceptional among the staff. Um, in particular, this person, um, uh, has been an outstanding asset um, for not only our residency class, but for the department here as a whole. Uh, she is a force to be reckoned with. She works tirelessly to ensure that schedules are made, eyes are dotted, and T's are crossed. Uh, her support for us as residents has truly been a breath of fresh air. Um, I'm honored to present this year's uh, award for the Golden Appreciation Staff Award to Mrs. Christy um, Casper-Greenwell. Thank you all so much. I have to say, I'm so honored to be your all's residency mom. I have so much love and respect for each and every one of you all. So this means the world to me. So thank you guys so much. I really appreciate it. And uh, each year, the residents also nominate and vote for faculty who should be recognized uh, as exceptional among, um, among the faculty for teaching. Um, the residents hold this faculty member uh, in particular in extremely high regard. Um, his knowledge and wisdom is at times overwhelming to us, um, but it certainly does not outweigh, outweigh his compassion for his students 
um, his residents and his patients. Uh, I'm honored to present this year's re uh, recipient of the Golden Apple Teaching Award to Dr. Rith El Malik. And uh, now I'd like to present the um, Donald and Dorothy Strauss Award for Psychotherapy Supervision. Each year, the residents also nominate and vote for faculty that should be recognized as exceptional with respect to psychotherapy. Um, for those, um, so each year we, we nominate and vote for faculty that should be recognized um, uh, for psychotherapy supervision. Um, uh, in particular, um, this award is named after uh, Donald Strauss, who was a, a, a key business executive um, with Beckman Instru Instruments in Fullerton, California. Um, in particular, he was recognized by his friends, colleagues, associates, and his community for his uh, wit, his wisdom, um, and his unimpeachable integrity. Um, he also left a legacy um, of his belief in young, bright students uh, and his hope for his country, state, and community. Uh, in similar fashion, Dorothy Strauss um, was also a, a, had a prodigious teaching career. Um, she taught literature, composition, ESL, um, and uh, taught for Golden West Community College. Um, along the way, she also won several awards for her teaching and became the first part-time faculty member to give tenure. Um, much similar uh, to these two um, heroic figures, uh, the recipient of this award continues to have a legacy of integrity, um, honor, and compassion in the supervisees. Um, so I'm honored to present this year's recipient of the Donald and Dorothy Strauss Award for Psychotherapy Supervision to Dr. Ben Schenbacher. I do believe Dr. Schenbacher, however, is streaming, so we may, he may be listening as we speak. Uh, next, I'm going to bring Dr. Vincent back up. I believe she has more to present. Thank you. So let me take you all back to March of 2020. Um, and part meeting, which is the American Association of Directors of Residency Training, was in Dallas, Texas. Our meeting was March the 4th through the 7th, pre-COVID. Um, having a great time. I'm there. Dr. Caudell is there. Dr. Lee from Child Psychiatry is there. Other people that you probably know were there never thought that anything would happen with the pandemic uh, until they started calling people to return to California and New York and Washington State. And we still didn't really think much about it. But then uh, the World Health Organization declared a pandemic on March the 11th. The US president declared a state of emergency on March 13th and our world changed, except for the residency. Residency did change, but we didn't miss many beats because of Dr. Robert Caudill, who is the recipient of this award, which is the, oops. Uh, <laughs> Make it go away. <laughs> uh, the, he is the recipient of the Laughlin Award for Teaching Excellence. Uh, Dr. Caudell has done a tremendous service for our department and for the residency by keeping us afloat. There was no uh, book, uh, no playbook for what to do when pretty much health sciences shut down. Residents had to stay home who could stay home, which was the whole outpatient cadre. We had to learn how to do blue jeans, which was our predecessor to Zoom. And it was only because of his excellence and his knowledge base that we could pull it off as quick as we did and be successful at it. Um, he learned how to, because of his creativity and his initiative to learn how to do all this, he learned how to use Google Glass, Google Glasses, with our first attempt to do virtual recruiting. We had our graduation, a virtual graduation in 2020. We had uh, everything shifted pretty much to virtual or hybrid. And 
he still champions, of course, telehealth, which is his expertise, but he really does care about your education much more than probably you all know. Uh, we get emails at midnight often from uh, him. So he's constantly thinking about education. So on behalf of the education group, uh, we are awarding the Lothman Award to Dr. Robert Caudill. Thank you, Dr. Benson. That's very kind. So it's my honor now to introduce our next speaker, actually. And this is Joyce St. Clair, who's speaking on behalf of the contributions of Harvey St. Clair, which included the support for psychodynamic psychotherapy education. Joyce has been an advocate for this as well since Harvey's departure, and she's been a solid friend to uh, the department and the training office. So I'm fortunate, we're fortunate to be able to give her a few minutes of time here to speak to us about that. Let me tell you about Harvey. Harvey has now been dead 20 years. He was 79 when he died. Uh, he was a wonderful guy. And I don't say that because I was his second wife. He was, he loved psychiatry. He loved working with people who were long time mental illness types because nobody paid attention to him. He did. Father uh, was very, very working on it, and he can't speak against it. Um, once I asked Harvey, why do people, why do they look down on mental illness? And he said, it's easy. All of us, it's a human condition. All of us look down on people who are different than we are. We were married 13 years, uh, and one winter day, I had I worked the whole time that we were married. Harvey died from diabetes, and it was the most horrible. I've never been close to it, but I'm telling you, it's awful. Um, so but he always thought he could beat it. He couldn't. There's no way. Anyway, one winter's day, I had to go to Cincinnati to give a talk, and I worked all the time. And I came home, and he met me at the door, and he said, I have written a poem. Harvey St. Clair never wrote a poem in his life, but he did that day. I want to read it to you. It's called Hope, and I ask that you think about it. The vistas of history, the struggle of today, the mists of the future, a firm man's hope. Seldom sought, oft forgot, offset by despair, hope is everywhere. Not a wish, origins obscure, spawning faith, the cloak secure. Courage a cousin, caring a brother, always a friend, its presence eternal. Named by fear, glibly said, never concrete, it lives instead. Restoring balance, assuring peace, profusing light, our unsung heritage. Never certain, not wholly ours, asking belief, a bridge to God. That's what he wrote one snowy day, and that is on his. Um, he was cremated, and I had him put the pretty box. I didn't want him to get cold, so if you're ever at Cave Hill Cemetery, go in the side entrance, and there's a former guard guard house that's there. Go right straight in, make a left hand turn, make another left, and there he is. And I understand that when people thank you, that when people come in, they go to that and look. He was a great guy. Uh, let me tell you a little bit about his children. All of his children became physicians. They married physicians. They did everything. We don't have any psychiatrists in the family, but we've got uh, a spine guy. We've got a lot of people that way. Um, 
So I guess that's kind of all I have to say, but I will tell you that he was one of the finest men I have ever met. This nice man right here, I was a widow for six years when Harvey died, I'm not gonna do this again. So, because it was so painful. If you have had recent deaths of spouses, you know how miserable it is. Um, anyway, I was a widow for, I was, I was a widow for six years. The man sitting there is my new husband. Uh, and he's not that new anymore, bless your heart, so sorry. Uh, anyway, he, uh, it'll, be 16 years in August. it'll be 16 years in August. We've had a good time. We have cried, we have laughed, and that's kind of the way it goes. Matt, in his own right, is pretty darn smart. Uh, he is one of 500 people in the entire world who, what do you do? Tell me. Support a nuclear power plant. Yeah, he builds nuclear power plants. This man could not put a screwdriver with one hand and put the other part of it into a wall. But he designs HVAC systems for nuclear power plants. So that's kind of all I want to say. But thank you for inviting me. I will tell you that there's a check on its way. Check in the mail. You'll have it probably by Wednesday. And spend it in good health, whoever gets it. Thank you. Thank you very much for including me. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. Very much. And every resident in the room here pretty much recalls getting a basket full of books at the beginning of the academic year when they first sign on our program. Right there is who you can thank for it. All right, we have some awards of recognizing resident work in the community. Oh, by the way, I did want to mention, do you ever think about how many things this replaced? I had a flashlight in my pocket. Who knew? Who knew? Um, Dr. Benson, if you would come back up and uh, recognize some of our residents who have done work in the community. This is the time we really recognize our residents for the work that they do in the community. Oops, can you hear me now? No, okay, can you hear me now? Better, I can't scream, I was never a cheerleader, I'm sorry. So special recognition of residents for what they do in the community. We ask for their information and we get very little, and I know our residents do many things in their own community of faith, their community schools, uh, yet we haven't heard much from anyone. But we did hear from several. Dr. Buka, Bumaka, I'm sorry, Bumaka Shah worked in suicide prevention booth at the fair, and hopefully will it do so again this year, and spoke at the wellness event organized by the medical school. So, Dr. Shaw, you're here, aren't you? Yes, thank you. The psychiatry residents overall finished second in the Graduate Medical Education Office's first annual Bless the Block fundraiser. The goal was $5,000, but we raised $13,297. And that meant over 100 or went over 10 families in a neighborhood will receive gifts that off their gift, their wish lists. So our residents raised an average of $62.46 per resident. Top three programs receive a free lunch provided by Stockyards Bank and Trust. So uh, lunch is in the mail too. I'm not sure where it is, but you'll be getting notified when they have the lunch. Now that the pandemic is over, we can eat as a group. Dr. Jessica Crump, she earned her certificate for achievement for completing the training to be a Sharing Hope facilitator. And Sharing Hope is an initiative launched by NAMI to destigmatize mental illness, destigmatize mental wellness, and to communicate information, share resources within the Black, African, ancestry, immigrant communities. Facilitators have gone through months of training to facilitate these community talks. All facilitators are of Black, African, ancestry, or of African immigrant populations. So Dr. Crump, wherever you are, we, we salute you for your community service. Anyone else here want to tell us something that they've done in the community? I think I... Oh, okay. One more? I didn't hear about this. 
Oh, Dr. Faruqi uh, has been an in-training in delegate for the Kentucky Medical Association, served on the Physician Wellness Committee, Greater Louisville Medical Society, and is co-chair of the Scientific Committee of the Kentucky Psychiatric Medical Association. Dr. Faruqi, thank you. Next, I want to introduce Dr. Caudell, who will give uh, some recognition. Sorry. I do have some individual recognition that are worthy of mention here. Uh, Dr. Steve Lovis was clear busting some tables back there moments ago. Um, <laughs> apart from his restaurant industry skills, turns out to be a bit of a prodigy on the in-service exam. I don't think this is a record that's ever been achieved before. I don't think it's going to be a repeat, repeatable uh, record. But he not only had the highest score in the program all four years of training, but he scored in the 95 percentile above each of those years. He should be writing questions going forward. So I hope you'll consider that. But I wanted to recognize Dr. Love on that. <laughs> Dr. Anna Kostruski took the Park Duval coverage for the year. So we developed an alliance with Park Duval, which is a public health uh, sponsored site within Jefferson County, primarily in the West End of Louisville. University of Louisville has looked for many opportunities to have these sort of partnerships and Park Duval just presented itself as one. And so uh, Anna has been the resident who's done most of that work and it was a volunteer basis. And so she took time away from her other rotation to be there to do that. But uh, I've been the attending that worked with her and it's of course a startup kind of thing. It's got a future, I believe. This sort of work will be important going forward for putting mental health professionals into primary care facilities such as this. Um, I'm looking for help, so any other faculty members that want to, you do have to do a four-hour training on all scripts, which is the downside to it, but uh, I wanted to recognize Dr. Kostruski for her efforts on that um, project. <laughs> Next, I'm going to share with you the high Pright scores and then our mind games team and tell you what those mean. The um, Pright scores by class, we recognize each year. Uh, this year, Dr. Or Tyler Root is our uh, first year high score. So congratulations. We don't put, when a first year resident takes the exam in our program, they've been on a psychiatry service for all of one month. So we don't take credit for the high score. They figured they brought that with them. And we don't penalize low scores necessarily at that point because we have three years and change to uh, teach them some more stuff. But, but Dr. Rich's uh, score was quite impressive. The second year was Bugabi Anka and she had the highest second year score. Third year score was Dr. Blythe Rescue, one of our current chiefs. And you probably guessed the high score of PGY4, the aforementioned Dr. Love. <laughs> the, the asterisk is there because he was a repeat. And again, he repeated across all four years. So um, the comp competition was for second place in that class. Mind Games is a event sponsored by the American Psychiatric Association program. There's about 250 categorical psychiatry programs in the U.S. Each of them are invited to, to put a team together. We take our top three scorers. It's an interactive computer quiz show type format game. The top three teams travel to the American Psychiatric Association annual meeting and compete head to head in person. So the folks who represent the University of Louisville Department of Psychiatry this year included Dr. Love, who was the team captain for the third year in a row, I believe. Dr. Matt Neal, one of our outgoing chiefs and one of our fourth year residents finishing the program was uh, on the team as well. And then a newcomer, Bagabi Anka uh, was also a team member. So this is our team, with our team. <laughs> Next, uh, you know, the, when someone matches to our residency, they match in what's called the University of Louisville uh, School of Medicine and affiliated hospitals and that's affiliated hospital thing you know I don't think people sometimes recognize when they get here but that's that's a big part of our program actually I mentioned we have 30 something stipends that's the underlying financial support for each position of those 30 something stipends the University of Louisville proper via the University of Louisville hospital provides 16 of them so the remaining stipends and the remaining salary lines for our trainees come from other programs such as these so I just wanted to make sure I mention them here Norton Hospital, of course, um, is one, and the Bingham Clinic with the child programs there. The VA Medical Center, Central State Hospital. Historically, the Adanta, it went out again. The Adanta Group um, has been a partner. Peace Hospital is new as of this year, and we're looking forward to a lot of great things in that area in the future. 
Park Duvall, as I mentioned with Dr. Kostruski. And then I also wanna make special mention of the KPMA Foundation, which is not technically a partner in terms of rotation sites, but what's happened here is that in the development office through the University of Louisville, one can donate funding intended to certain causes, but the management of that, and I can't speak specifically to it, I'm just saying that's not been a productive means for us to acquire funding that we needed to do kind of creative projects. So we discovered that the KPMA, the Kentucky Psychiatric Medical Association, had a foundation they had put into place a number of years ago that had just lain fallow, basically. It was not being used to solicit contributions. It was not turning around and using those contributions in any meaningful way. And through their foresight and, and their willingness to cooperate on doing something kind of creative here, we've got together with the University of Kentucky's uh, residency program. And now anyone in this room can go on their website and make a tax deductible donation to the KPMA Foundation. And it will wind up, you can earmark it for our residency specifically. And then we do get that money and we do use it. And we underwrote some expenses for travel for a number of residents to go to the American Psychiatric Association meeting this year down in New Orleans and present scientific poster sessions. We have other ideas for that money. I have a long list I'll share with you here before the end of the night, but KPMA Foundation may be part of that. So those of you who have more money than you know what to do with perhaps, this is a possible charitable contribution you should consider. Next, I've got a number of folks I need to recognize just who help us in the training office, part of the training office, we make us help us do what we need to do. Unfortunately, Dr. Reese could not be with us, but everyone in the room here who's been associated with the program in recent years knows her well. She was our associate program director up through December, I guess, of this year. She made the difficult decision to leave academia and be home with her three children more and do telepsychiatry from home. And I'm the last person in the world that could tell her that's a bad idea. So, um, so we wish her well. And I wish she was here tonight and we've had a great time working alongside her. So. without missing a beat and waiting in the wings, fortunately for all of us, was Dr. Courtney Eves, a past chief resident of the program, probably knew the program as well as anyone else possibly could and uh, has stepped in and done a great job so far. And I'm looking forward to see where, where this will go. They're both share this characteristic is that they solve problems I didn't know I had. I find out that they were solved afterwards after they've already dealt with it. And I'm very grateful for that. So thank you, Dr. Eves and welcome officially here. You guys would like to get out of here at a reasonable time, so I won't say a lot more about Christy, but you all know what she does for the program and how vital she is. So thank you, Christy. Dr. Vincent tries to keep me in line. Her valuable support for education is one of the reasons we're, we can be here tonight. Remember, academia has multiple roles. We do research, we do patient care. But where he worked for the University of Louisville, which last I checked was an educational institution, and sometimes it's easy to forget when we get busy taking care of patients, but Dr. Vincent, make sure we don't forget that, so thank you. I'm working up the ladder here. Dr. Casey could not attend, but you did hear some pre-recorded words from him earlier. I believe that in Colorado. Dr. Casey is supportive of our educational mission. He helps pay the bills, certainly. So I well, thank you, Dr. Casey. Dr. Tasman, a past chair, uh, we'll recognize here in a moment because he continues to support our residency through some awards we're going to give this evening. And then Dr. Strauss, obviously his support, not only for the award in his parents' name, but obviously he was the training director, actually my final years of residency when I was a resident. So we have a long legacy here. I wanted to recognize also with Dr. Reese, if she had been here, we would have had, I believe four or five former associate program directors in the room at one time. I don't know how many times that's going to happen, but uh, I'll, along those lines, I didn't have her in the slides because I didn't know she'd be here. Dr. Fitzgerald, Barbara Fitzgerald. So Barbara, thanks for coming. <laughs> Dr. Fitzgerald was an attending of mine at Norton's and she was my associate program director when I took on the role here and she helped uh, me learn the ropes. So thank you for that. Dr. Lippman is also joining us. I wanted to thank him formally in front of the, the audience because he stepped in for our journal club and helped uh, improve the academic rigor of our offerings in that regard. So thank you, Dr. Lippman. <laughs> Dr. Wright is unable to attend, I believe, but, and I don't know if there's a magic number where you recognize this, but uh, this is the 42nd year he has been teaching cognitive behavioral therapy to residents. 
And at some point that becomes a milestone. And I know he's winding back his time a little bit. And I didn't want to wait till he was gone to make a point of it. So 42 years is still significant. So if you don't mind, we'll recognize Dr. Wright for his 42 years of teaching cognitive behavioral therapy. <laughs> Dr. Wood is going to give the presentation for the Martin Grossman Consultation Liaison Award. But I'm Dr. Lauren, it's nice to see everyone here. I am presenting the Council Liaison Award on behalf of Dr. Berger and Dr. Frierson. Um, this year, uh, the award is going to a really special recipient. This is someone who has been an incredible, um, an incredible um, asset to teams on the consult services. Um, she's shown exceptional um, dedication and commitment to patient care. She also is a phenomenal teacher um, and has had really positive reviews from all the medical students. And I've also had the pleasure of being her psychotherapy supervisor for the past year. This year, the recipient is Barbara Bianca. Uh, the next award is going to be presented by Dr. Ike. It's my great duty to present the John Bell Emergency Psychiatry Award. Unlike the last award, there's no lore of why it's called this. I have no idea. Um, but uh, I can explain a little bit of what it is. So this goes to one lucky resident who exemplified themselves in EPS. Maybe they already saw who they were. Um, but uh, it, most of you already know what EPS is, uh, but it stands for the Emergency Psychiatric Service. It's a standalone uh, emergency department just for patients with psychiatric complaints. Um, it's, uh, it's very fast paced, it's very high acuity, uh, it's probably one of the, the fastest paced, highest acuity environments that you work in as a, as a psychiatrist. Um, so we get everything from low and nats to psychiatric patients uh, who are psychotic, wanting to kill Ronald McDonald because they think uh, he stole his, uh, their secret formula to their uh, you know, recipes and crap like that. Um, so to work in such an environment, it is key to be adaptive and flexible and be able to make difficult decisions swiftly and accurately. And the recipient of this award certainly fits this bill. The most challenging aspect though is the ability to tolerate Dr. Salmelak, Terrell, and myself, uh, who are all equally annoying to uh, their own right. Uh, therefore, it gives me great pleasure to announce Dr. Said Abbas as the recipient. So, we'll see you. <laughs> Next up is uh, Dr. Lippman. Before Lippman, Dr. Lippman speaks, let me just put a little context on things. Uh, Dr. Bell was actually a contemporary of Dr. St. Clair. And so, one of the things you get to do before you become history is, I guess, pass it on. So Dr. Bell was one of the directors of emergency psychiatric services for many years, a wonderful man. I was one of his last supervisees before he retired. So um, I remember Dr. Bell well, he, he lives on in, in our memory and in that award. Well, one more thing, one more thing about uh, Tim. He comes from a long line of excellence. His mom is a premier librarian for the University of Louisville. Well, greetings everybody, glad to see everybody. We're pretty lucky to be here now, depending on how the how the uh, pandemic is going, but finally we're here together. So first of all, congratulations to all the graduates and their families, pretty important stuff, a lot of good work. Today, we're gonna look at the research award. What about research? That's a discipline that looks to the future, how to make things better, how to make progress, pretty important stuff. So we're gonna look at the research award. And we have an awardee for achievement in this area this year. Uh, the committee that was to try to make the pick, who gets it, was deadlocked. We couldn't make a decision. So finally, other faculty members had to join us and we made a decision. So we've got a, a pick. Um, this year's research award goes to Jessica Crump. She's not here, but we thank her for that achievement. Zubi Salman, come along, you're next. Good evening, everyone. I'm Zubi Salman from Malibu Next, but VA Medical Center. And it is a great honor for me to present VA Resident Award today. Before I announce the award, I would like to congratulate all the graduates on your incredible achievement today. On this special day, I have a message for all the graduates. And what I really want to emphasize is, love who you are. You are the only you there is. No one else has the unique gifts you have. No one else has your distinct talent, abilities, and potential. Cherish who you are.
because you were designed on purpose for a purpose. You are chosen to be a physician. Believe that. Always love yourself right where you are in the life, no matter how messy things get or how mad at yourself you might be. You will be with you for the rest of your life. So be your own best friend. Life is so much easier if you treat yourself with the dignity and the love you deserve. At the same time, make sure you treat others with the respect and dignity and kindness. As you begin this journey in creating a life for yourself and others with kindness, the greatest joy will come from within. But that was my message. <laughs> so now I would like to announce the name of the resident who is already hardworking and passionate about her work with the veterans. She did an incredible job when she was working with me at the VA rotation. So the recipient of VA resident award is Dr. Ariel Bledreski. <laughs> now I would like to invite Dr. George Clio, who's a director of inpatient uh, unit at the University of Eagle Hospital. Hello, everyone. So I'm Dr. Clio. I'm the inpatient attending on the North. Dr. Wong is not here. He's the inpatient attending at North. But before I announce the recipient for the inpatient award, I just want to say to the graduating uh, fourth years, uh, all of you, it was a pleasure for me to work with all of you. I've been here since, what, 2014. You're definitely probably one of the best classes that I work with. Uh, I can say that because the other classes are gone. <laughs> <laughs> but I, but I, I really know, I mean, it was a pleasure to work with all of you. And, uh, and uh, so years one, two, and three who are here, you got your work cut out for you. So, but, but, but it's looking good. So. <laughs> So going back to the inpatient award. Uh, so Dr. Wong and I always submit who we think is the best uh, recipient for this award. And it's always difficult. There's multiple uh, recipients. In my opinion, we're all, they're all winners. Um, you know, what we're looking for among the usual stuff like showing up on time, you know, uh, not causing too much trouble, and, uh, you know, just making sure you do your work. Uh, what we're looking for is you're going above expectations, uh, eagerness to learn, uh, seeing some seeing some professional growth during that time, improvement. So this year's winner is uh, Ali Talpour. Well, thank you so much. Thank you so much. I was definitely not ex expecting this. And uh, yeah, this was not possible without the blessings of Almighty and the man of faith. And uh, with the constant support from my parents, my wife, my brother, and all my family and friends and my co-residents, uh, thank you so much for your support. And Dr. Kalil, Dr. Wong, thank you so much for believing in me. Uh, just a little message, maybe it will be a little time taking, but uh, a couple of years ago, I was, I was struggling to be, uh, to get into a psychiatry residency. And just like when you announced my name, it went all in like flashback and I just had that. Uh, it's it's an immense pleasure to receive this award. And uh, I've come a long way through this and this is my messages to, and my award is actually dedicated to all the international medical graduates who are struggling that this is possible. And thank you so much. Thank you so much for your support. Thank you. Congratulations. And by the way, uh, by the way, Dr. Crump is here with me. Uh, she received the award too, so she she saw that. So, Dr. Crump, <laughs> do you want to say something? Well, I wasn't until you put me on the spot. But <laughs> yes. Um, first of all, um, thank you to Dr. El Malik um, for giving me an opportunity to do research, especially when I was kind of a bit lost on what to do. So, thank you to him and. Um, the other students and graduate students I worked with on the research. Um, I enjoyed it and it was definitely a surprise. And thank you to the Lord, my parents and my sister who encouraged me to do research and to do my best. And of course, to my faculty and fellow residents. So. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I welcome, congratulations to you both. This may be a first, we're beaming in people, you know, from EPS to uh, receive an award to speak to that. 
Uh, our next award is the University Outpatient Psychiatry Award. Did we figure out? Oh, here we are. Dr. Eves is going to present. Oh, thank you. Uh, a little bit of background on this course. This is one that a number of us uh, are involved in the selection of. Uh, some of the criteria, I think, just taking exemplary care of patients, assigning them, obviously, being a team player, creating documentation that doesn't mean that the attending sitting up all night trying to correct it. So at a minimum, you run a spell checker and a few things like that. So Dr. Hughes can tell you more. All right. Yes, I'm very honored to be able to present this award. Um, yeah, as you all, some of you know, some of you don't, our third year residents are transitioned into doing only, mostly only outpatient work during their entire third year. And this can be quite the adjustment from the first and second year, which is vast majority of hospital-based work. And this resident really dove right in. She was excellent with patients. She really has a great rapport with the patients she sees. She's excellent at coming up with a treatment plan, communicating it both to the faculty and to the patients that she's seeing. It has really been an honor to work with her in our outpatient clinic. And so I am excited to present this award to Rena Perlin. She may be listening, um, so congratulations if you're listening. So next we have a couple of sort of culmination awards. These are exclusively for the finishing PGY4 class. We have an unusual situation too tonight because well, one thing that's kind of fun is that the um, presentation of these awards is being done by former recipients of them. So that's kind of cool. So the Ruby and John Schwab Award is in honor of a former chairman, uh, probably in the most of the 80s, late 70s, I believe uh, he was Dr. Tasman's immediate predecessor. And so it was primarily thought of as an academic achievement award, uh, research, writing, teaching. It's thought to, I mean, we, we try to figure out how to conceptualize these because there's two of these culmination awards. And so this one was generally viewed as the one with the most academic uh, potential uh, among the finishing residency group. And so it's my great honor this evening to uh, present this award to my good friend, Dr. Ali Farouk. Next, we're going to bring Dr. Eves back to give the Alan and Kathy Tasman Award. As you can see, we've got a um, sort of a situation here with former chairman uh, come back and give us some award money. So we're, we're grateful for that. Dr. Eves. All right. So as you can see, for this award, we really look for one of our residents that um, kind of well-rounded activity throughout really in the, the entire residency. We look at clinical service, teaching, as well as scholarly excellence. We're kind of looking at all the different areas. This resident, since he started, has really gone above and beyond in all of these areas, really connects well with patients, really goes, he's there early, he's staying late, he's not leaving until everything is taken care of, and really enjoys teaching, has really gone above and beyond with kind of teaching both our residents and our medical students throughout his entire time here. And also, you know, has just been great, both uh, he's actually our past very recent chief resident, really kind of gone above and beyond for our program. So our recipient is Matthew Neal. Okay, if this works well, we have a couple of quick slideshows put together by the resident group. So we'll stream those onto here.
So next, Dr. Eve is going to recognize those residents who have completed three years of training and are now, now eligible to do something called fast tracking into their final two years of, are now eligible to, to finish their final two years in a child and adolescent program, thus after five years of training, are board eligible in both adult, general, and child and adolescent psychiatry. This year, uh, we have two such residents leaving our current third year class. Uh, to do PGY4 elsewhere, and I'll let Dr. Eve tell you the rest. All right, so yeah, I think you pretty much said most of uh, what we need to know. We have two, two of our residents leaving. We are really gonna miss them as part of our program. We are obviously sad to see them leaving early, but excited for them that they are taking the next step in their career. Um, so one of them, so Greg Wyckoff, he's the first um, resident who's had, he's headed to University of Colorado. Um, if you want to come up, we have a small gift for you. All right. And then our other resident who is headed out is Rachel Getzenberg. She was not able to be here with us tonight, but she is headed to the Children's Hospital of Philadelphia. Um, and we are really going to miss her as well. Thank you. So thoughts on the occasion. Uh, this event over the years has been everything from a brief cocktail to an academic hour with pizza to what you see before you. I'm, one of my thoughts when taking the position was that four years of effort merited something significant in terms of a rite of passage, an event that marks the transition from residency training into independent practice. So that's kind of what you're seeing this evening. We've talked about the program, where the program's been and where the program could go. And the residents asked me, well, how do we get there? And some of the things you know that we could be doing, we interview candidates each year to join us. And they say, well, what can you do over and above a stipend? And we tell them these are the kind of things we do if we had endowments, but just ideas. And if you guys think of ideas after having completed four years with us and have thoughts about this, we would welcome them. We'll just add them to the list. We won't actually go out and buy them now, but we would add them to the list. And that's always helpful. So some thoughts as you go forward into independent practice, question everything and why. Those of you who have been in our colloquium that Dr. Goodwin and I used to do on Thursday morning know the value of questions and how important we think that is, how central that really is to the work of, uh, of psychiatrists. If you think about it, the stereotypical answer to every question coming to us from a patient is a question coming back at them all the time. And it just gets in our blood. And we, so we, we questions are, are central to us. I love this quote by Richard Feynman. He was a physicist. He said, I would rather have questions that can't be answered than answers that can't be questioned. And that's also is central to us because along with stand-up comedians, psychiatrists are the people who say awkward truths. We often bring those things out with our patients. We bring them out with others who aren't our patients sometimes, but we're the ones who have to have that, that courage, I think, that voice that speaks things that may not be popular, may be hidden, may be secrets, but uh, we, we detoxify them by saying them. So some thoughts, you know, we're on life after a couple of COVIDs. This is the class that has spent probably half of your training period under a pandemic COVID regulatory restriction. And it's, it's changed things. It's, it's, the question coming in was, what would that do to training? Will we be producing the same quality in product? Because we knew coming in, we were kind of warned that medical schools were not doing the same sorts of things. They couldn't when they lost the capability of in-person care. So what does that mean is different? So training during a time of change is, is a bit of a theme here, but there's also the illusion of permanence, which uh, I wrote the illusion of change, but I really meant the illusion of permanence because everyone thinks the way things are is the way they always will be. And that's it's clearly not the case if we've learned nothing else over the recent past. Many of these changes are irreversible. There's a therapist, uh, Donald Meichenbaum, who you heard me refer to. And one of his sort of taglines is what you've just done as a patient is irreversible. And, it, and what that means is that once you've learned a new skill, you can't really unlearn it. And to some degree, what we've done with all these changes that COVID brought about and the adaptations in our training programs, as well as our patient care are irreversible. We're not going to go back and forget that we, we did, we can do things this way. So, so that part is good. It will have implications quite a bit uh, going forward. I mean, not only has it changed your clinical practices, it's changed our recruitment practices, it's changed your didactics, 
most of you know, even the clinical skills verification exam this year, for instance, for the second year was totally virtual. Now, in in-person stuff, you, you know, we were trying to figure out how to adapt it best. In in-person care, a lot of times, if you're going to national meetings and stuff, they want proof of vaccinations and various paperwork that goes with that. And we're trying to keep up. And we're in the, those of us in the virtual world, but we can't, you know, proof of vaccination doesn't mean anything to us, but we are going to require you to show antivirus programs on your computers going forward. That's going to be our, our new line. No? But if it helps you, you know, they don't have to actually work. You just have to have them. The staying power of things that are eternally true. I mean, we have a lot of stuff that comes through in medical school. They used to tell, I think, each class that uh, half of what we tell you here is not true. We just don't know which half. I'm not sure if we still can say that exactly, because uh, sometimes I think we know. What education is and is not, though, is it prepares you going forward. So we can tell you a bunch of facts, but unless you can go out there in the absence of facts and find them on your own. We really haven't prepared you, but I think we do. I think a number of things in our program do that quite well. So I look forward to seeing what you guys are gonna do in the world when you get done here. The value of certainty in an uncertain world is something else I would challenge. I mean, it's easy to get very sure that you know the answer. And then sometimes it takes a while to find out you don't. So just um, be, be open to the idea that sometimes things we think are quite true may have exceptions. A book I've recommended a lot is uh, this one uh, it's called The Coddling of the American Mind. I slightly changed the title. I thought that I kind of like this one. This is what you guys have. <laughs> but uh, anyway, uh, so now I'm going to get on to the, the real world of business and recognize our 2022 graduates from the General Psychiatry Residency Training Program. And Tom Cruise was invited, but uh, could not make it this evening. He had some sort of other commitment. These are the gentlemen, and I say gentlemen because uh, unless someone has changed since I last spoke with you, well, we all have, we have gentlemen finishing our class. And when these fellows came into the program, this is what it looked like. Now, you'll notice uh, Arouge, their female colleague, departed last year for child and adolescent training program. So what we wound up is, is these guys, and I, I kind of thought of them this way a little bit. You know, I, I almost had a baseball team, but they, they've done a great job. They really set a bar in, in a number of areas that's going to be tough to beat. We have one other slideshow to share with you. This one is in their honor.
So thank you again, Will, for producing uh, those videos. So first up is Dr. Afshar, and if you wouldn't mind coming up here and just remain standing as we introduce your class. Mm -hmm. Dr. Afshar came from us. He was the He's from Massachusetts originally, trained down in Australia, actually, uh, did some clinical work in New Orleans. He is bound to the University of Vermont with his family, where he's got a position in the university there. And clinical responsibilities will probably be primarily in emergency psychiatry, which may be familiar to him. He's got some additional inpatient roles, and we've been happy to have him here. Dr. Abraham DeWitt. <laughs> He's from E-Town originally and heading back that direction, I believe. Uh, he'll be finally remembered. He uh, had an interest in psychotherapy from the start. He's also interested in a uh, gratis appointment with our department, and we will be fully supportive of that. And he's got company. Next up is Dr. Ali Faruqi. Dr. Faruqi is originally from Lexington. He attended school at the University of Kentucky. He came to us after dabbling in some non-psychiatric specialty kind of things, but he saw the light and joined us. And served as a chief, and we're very happy to see him move on to integrative psychiatry program here with Dr. Randy Schroep, who is also a faculty member here. Many of us are close to Dr. Schroep, and we anticipate Dr. Faruqi will be having a gratis appointment as well. <laughs> Dr. Jeff Jasonham, Dr. J. Also from Louisville originally, they did medical school in St. Louis. He is, uh, has enjoyed his training here. He plans to join the faculty of staff, rather, uh, clinic staff at Clark Memorial Hospital over in Jefferson. Dr. Justin Koo from Loma Linda School of Medicine in California. Also found psychiatry after dabbling in other areas, such as anesthesiology briefly, but turned into a fine psychiatrist. He will be returning to Southern California to work in an outpatient center there at the Los Angeles VA. Dr. Stephen Love is a graduate of the University of Louisville School of Medicine. He's from Northern Kentucky. He uh, has enjoyed the independent learning opportunities here. He plans to do some local tenant work at State Hospital in Indiana, as well as a homeless outreach work in the Hope Village here in Louisville, Kentucky. <laughs> Dr. Matthew Neal originally hailed from Lexington, but completed his medical school here at the University of Louisville. He will be working local attendance positions during the coming year and plans to pursue a career in academia at a later date. <laughs> Dr. Ethan Short, he is a Louisvillian. <laughs> University of Louisville graduate. He's one of four University of Louisville School of Medicine graduates in this class, which is our record. Uh, that's about as many U of L medical students as we've ever taken in recent memory. Dr. Shore uh, has enjoyed being here plan after graduation, plans on splitting his work between a number of environments, getting more understanding of how he wants to further develop his professional career. So congratulations to each of you. Some final uh, just wrap up remarks. If you wish to get photos, there's Great venues all around this building, inside, outside. The, the lighting should be great. Um, nice scenic backdrops. A reminder to everyone that uh, can, uh, you're welcome and invited to our picnic on June 29th, a Wednesday night over at Nunley, where we've spent the past several years. We're switching food. It'll be a little bit better, more of a cookout style food this year. So you'll hopefully enjoy that. And I think the residents have some entertainment planned as well. So please join us for that if you possibly can. I don't have anything else for the evening, so if you're driving, drive safely, and thank you again for turning up and uh, supporting residency education.